here, here, and wherever you are uh, on this fourth Sunday of Easter as we worship together and depart. Uh, a couple announcements. Since you're watching this, uh, this video, you probably already know, uh, but uh, due to the coronavirus, we will not be worshiping in, uh, in person. Uh, we're extending it through May. Towards the end of May, Session and I will, uh, will decide, discern, uh, if the reopening is in the foreseeable future, uh, when, if, and how we will be reopening. But until then, we are here, and we're glad to be here. Um, reminder uh, that uh, today we have communion, and, and of course, it's bring your own elements. So if you don't have your, um, your elements prepared, you can press pause and go get yourself some bread or carb of choice, uh, some grape juice or drink of choice, uh, so that you will be prepared when we get to that point in the worship later on. And finally, a reminder as well, if you are watching this uh, at or before 10.30 a.m. on May 3rd. Uh, after when you're done watching, you can clip, flip over to Zoom uh, and join for fellowship. You should have the link for that. If you don't have the link and want it in the future, just let me know and I'll make sure you get that. Um, uh, again, uh, if you're watching right at 10.30, then you can just go straight over after watching. If you watched before, uh, just head over around 11.30. Friends, let us prepare our hearts for worship. And now please join me in the call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. The Good Shepherd invites us to green pastures. We are refreshed beside still waters. We have been given everything we have. God offers us everything we need. When we walk through shadowed valleys, God is with us. We are comforted and reassured. God leads us in right paths. Our cups are filled to overflowing. God welcomes us to the table where, God is ex where love is expressed. We are invited to partake of the truth God offers. We have received plenty that we might share. We are called to be God's helpers. Let us worship God. Friends, please join in uh, the strike is over. <laughs>
Christ. We've made promises and words that have not necessarily been lived out in truth. Too easily we have pushed aside God's commands in favor of our own desires. Often we are more interested in pleasing ourselves than pleasing God. We are quick to follow hired hands who have trouble hearing the voice of the Good Shepherd. Let us return to the one who is our origin and reattune ourselves to God's intent for us. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Good Shepherd, we have wandered down the strange pathways of our world. We have ventured into dead-end streets that looked more inviting than the narrow ways marked out by the signposts of your love. We have trusted other voices and turned away from your truth. We have accepted your gifts without acknowledgement. We have failed to use our overflowing cups to fill the cups of sisters and brothers who need what we could offer. Forgive us, we pray, and restore us to your fold. Amen. Father. 
And in the same way, Zuzu knows my voice. Now, Zuzu is not as obedient as Jesus. And just because she knows my voice doesn't necessarily mean she comes when she's called. But she knows my voice, and she comes if she feels like it. And hopefully, as she gets older, she'll learn better how to come when she's supposed to. Right, Zuzu? Zuzu does not like this costume, and I'm going to take it off here pretty soon because I bet she's hot. But I just wanted to, a chance for you to see, see a friend for those of you who remember Zuzu and meet a friend for those of you who don't. And just remember that God is our shepherd and God loves us and takes care of us no matter what. I'm going to stand up and imagine you here with me as I share your blessing. You are a beloved child of God. With you, God is well pleased. Amen. Our Hebrew scripture, if you were paying attention to my time with the children, will be no surprise. Our Hebrew scripture is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is the Lord is the Lord's my shepherd, all my need.
So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This Sunday is Good Shepherd Sunday. And while you might not have already known that, it's probably not a surprise based on the scripture readings and the hymn that we just sang. But before I became a pastor, I never knew that these scriptures are assigned to the lectionary on the fourth Sunday of Easter every year. So this Sunday has come to be known as Good Shepherd Sunday in pastor circles. But beyond being an interesting little bit of trivia, the fact that this comes around every year points to the importance of Psalm 23 and Jesus' statement found in John 10, I am the Good Shepherd. What is so important about this image of the Good Shepherd? If you are thinking, well, didn't we just have Psalm 23 a couple weeks ago? You have been paying attention. Yes, this did just come up during Lent, and it comes up frequently in our lectionary. And of course, it is probably the best known, most beloved of the Psalms. Many of you probably memorized it as children even, and can still recite it to this day, although maybe not the same version I just read. And yet, this psalm that has been drummed into the minds of children is also frequently heard at funerals and memorials. It also seems to me to be to have a particular poignancy at this time, as we enter our eighth week of our COVID-19 social distancing, at least in this church, as we face our own myriad ongoing concerns and anxieties, this crisis has stirred up. The connection of Psalm 23 to funerals is so strong that Juan Beck, a Roman Catholic seminary professor, wrote, For a long time I identified the psalm with death, tears, grieving, and funerals. I asked myself many times, why do I have to wait until after death to enjoy God's loving presence? Shouldn't I feel that presence during my life when I am lonely, fearful, or in need? And of course he's right. People in the time when the psalm was written, just like people in the time in Jesus' time, would need no explanation about shepherds, as shepherds were part of their everyday life. But in our world, in our context, most of us are pretty far removed from sheep and shepherds. And so a couple words about sheep and shepherds. Even those of us who know shepherds, things are a little different now than they were then. And in reading Jesus' discourse from our Gospel lesson, you would think that a shepherd would gladly sacrifice his life for his sheep. While a typical shepherd might not necessarily lay down his life for his sheep, it was certainly in his self-interest to do whatever he could to protect his sheep. The sheep had monetary value, and the sheep, lo a sheep lost would mean money lost. So shepherds undoubtedly would take risks when necessary to protect their sheep and protect their livelihood. And another thing about shepherds, they were not exactly the elite of society. In fact, shepherds were pretty close to the lowest of the low. So to say the Lord is my shepherd, you would think that wouldn't be the nicest thing you could say about God, and yet... Shepherd was also used as a metaphor for kingship. Kings were supposed to lead from a model of a shepherd taking care of his sheep, rather than a model of, I can do whatever I want because I'm king. Psalm 23 in 
other references to kings as shepherds throughout the Hebrew scriptures serve to undermine a secular, self-serving understanding of how to rule and replace it with an understanding that would benefit all of the king's subjects. Did it work? Well, honestly, probably not, but it's still a good model to live up to. And the psalmist tells us that this shepherd is indeed the ultimate protector. This shepherd provides for all of our needs, leads us in right paths, protects and accompanies us through the darkest valleys and the shadow of death. This psalm is used at the time of death because it's about so much more than assurance that our loved ones will dwell in the house of the Lord after their deaths. It assures us that God is with us in our darkest times. God is with us as we grieve the loss and adjust to life without them. God is with us whatever our darkest valleys may be. Economic hardship, family turmoil, loneliness. God is with us through it all. But often, the darker valley, the harder, the darker the valley, the harder it is to see God and to feel God and to know that God is there. And that is why we are called to be God's comforting staff in rock. We are called to be God's instruments, helping make God's presence known to those walking through the dark valley. In preparing for this sermon, I read a reminder that the Good Shepherd is a Christological image, and that the pastor should not err in considering themselves to be the shepherd. And when I read that, I thought it was a little funny, thinking that it would be quite take quite an ego of some sort of psychological issue to transfer the messianic image of the Good Shepherd to one's self. But then I was thinking about the hired hand Jesus mentions. He says that the hired hands are not the owners of the sheep and are more concerned with their own safety than that of the sheep. And it occurred to me that while certainly there is one and only one good shepherd, is it possible that we are all called to be hired hands? In a way, agents for the good shepherd. Jesus doesn't say the hired hand is bad or evil, just that the hired hand doesn't care for the sheep the way the good shepherd does. God's love and grace is deep and broad beyond our comprehension, but we can use the good shepherd image as a model for how to love and care for one another, how to be God's tools in making God's presence known. Whenever we meet someone's needs, whether physical or emotional, whether building a ramp or donating food or making a funeral lunch or giving money or food to a food bank, listening to a friend's trouble or in any other way that we can care for a person, we help them know God's comfort and protection. There's a movie called I've Loved You So Long. It's a French film. And the main character is Juliet, a woman reestablishing her relationship with her younger sister after 15 years of estrangement. As the film unfolds, we learn more and more about the circumstances of their separation. Juliet has just been released from prison where she served time for murder. And their parents disowned Juliet and forbade Leah who was 16 at the time, from having any relationship with Juliet. And Leah is happy to have the opportunity to be with her sister again, but Juliet is quiet and reserved and very slow to warm up to Leah or her family. And of course, the fact that Juliet was in prison is kept secret from everyone in the town where her sister Leah lives. As the family relationships develop, one day Leah's six-year-old daughter, trying to figure out where her auntie has been all this time, asks Leah, when you were little, were you an auntie, were you with auntie all the time? Yes, a lot of the time, of course. 
But Auntie is bigger than you. So she protected you? Yes, from everything. Why did she stop one day? Leah struggles to answer the question, because I wasn't a kid anymore. Go to sleep now. And the daughter replies, but we all need protection, even grown-ups, don't we? Eventually, it is revealed that Juliet was a doctor and that she had killed her six-year-old son. Only at the end are the circumstances of the death revealed. Spoiler alert if you were going to see this movie. Leah discovers that Juliet killed her son to protect him as he was dying a terrible, painful death. But she didn't defend herself in court because she wanted to go to prison. She couldn't continue leading a normal life after the loss of her son. And Leah confronts Juliet and asks her why she didn't tell the family, saying, I was there, we were there, we could have helped you. Juliet replied, helped me in what way? What could you have done when he screamed out in pain, when his limbs started writhing, and when he was choking, when he was choking to death? What could you have done? What would you have done? Unable to answer, Leah follows Juliet into her bedroom where she's sobbing. Leah holds her and says, I'm here. I love you. Do you understand? I love you. Tell me. Tell me. Juliet proceeds to tell Leah the whole story. How she had laid down her life to protect her son. And in that moment, Leah is God's agent, God's tool of love and grace for Juliet, a moment of redemption. For Juliet, a moment of reconciliation for the sisters. And while Leah would not have been able to alleviate the pain of her nephew, she is right that she could have helped Juliet by being there, by loving her, by walking through the darkest valley with her. We all need protection, even grown-ups. Whether or not we like to admit it, we are all sheep in need of God's love, in need of God's comfort, in need of God's protection. We are also called upon to be God's agent to bring that love and comfort and protection to others. But we are not the good shepherd. Ultimately, there is only one good shepherd, and it is our task to listen carefully for the voice of the good shepherd. Jesus guides us both as individuals and as a church. Sheep know the voice of their shepherd, can distinguish the call of their shepherd from those of other shepherds. But we're not always as bright as sheep. It's not always as easy for us to distinguish our shepherd's voice from that of other more pressing desires and needs. We get caught up in the necessary realities of banks and stock markets, employers and the healthcare system, political leaders. The list of false shepherds is endless. These people, these entities, want us to believe that they have the answers, that they can protect us. We'll be okay if we just follow them. But they are not the good shepherds. At best, they are well-meaning hired hands. At worst, they are wolves who snatch and scatter us. Only the Good Shepherd will lay down his life for us, not for monetary reasons as an ordinary shepherd, but for love. The Good Shepherd knows us by name, calls us by name. Just as Mary came to recognize the risen Christ at the tomb when he called her by name, we are called and we can discern the voice of the Good Shepherd. And in those times when we walk through our darkest facts, when we have difficulty hearing the voice, knowing that God is with us, we should recognize God in the helping hand of a stranger, in the listening ear of a friend, in the comforting hug of a loved one. God makes us lie down in green pastures, 
God leads us beside still waters. And as the psalmist writes, the Lord prepares a table for us, and indeed he has. This table has been prepared for us by the Good Shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. This table has been set for us, our cup overflows, and we are all invited to join Christ at this table. Come, sheep, and feast on the meal that Christ has prepared. Come, hire hands, and nourish your souls with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Come, one, and come all to the Lord's table. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we come to the time in our worship together. When we are together, this is when we would be passing the offering plate. Of course, now we actually have the capability to receive offerings online. The link is on our web page. It's on our Facebook page. And it will be sent out with the bulletin and the links for this worship service. And though we are not together in person, and though we are unable to pass the offering plate, let us take a moment now to remember our commitments to God, to remember our commitments to one another, and to commit ourselves anew, offering our talents, our tithes, and our very off lives to God. Church, our God has prepared a table for us, and our cup overflows. So let us give generously from the, our common wealth as our way of praising God and giving to those in need.
generous God, you have anointed us, and we are yours. Bless our tithes and offerings, that they may become green pastures and still waters for any and all who need your comfort and restoration. Amen. Friends, it is now the time for us to lift our prayers of joy and concern. Uh, I will uh, mention the prayer request, and then I will conclude with either God in your mercy or God in your grace. And I invite you to join me in lifting the prayers by saying, hear our prayer. These are all some uh, prayers that I've been praying every, every week in worship together. Um, and those other prayers that you might want to add, the perfect time for that would be during, during the Zoom worship the fellowship afterwards. I'll great, give some time at the very beginning of that for uh, any other prayer requests to be lifted up. But I begin with prayers for all of our loved ones in nursing homes and care facilities, especially those who are fighting the COVID-19, the coronavirus, but also those who simply cannot have visits from family and friends at this time, and particularly those who might not fully understand why that is. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And again, for all of the students uh, for whom school is their safe place, where they receive security, structure, reliability, love, and food. For all the teachers who are currently feeling so helpless and lost, trying to help them as best they can. And of course, for our seniors who are ending school, uh, ending their school year in nothing like the way they, they thought they would. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all the many victims of coronavirus, victims uh, in different ways and different fashions. We pray for our healthcare professionals who are on the front lines, for all the essential workers who are keeping things going. We pray for our leaders at all levels as they make hard decisions for the well-being of all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Friends, as Asians continue to be targeted by hate due to misconceptions about the coronavirus, we pray for those who are victims, who are uh, scared of becoming victims, and we pray for those who are perpetrating this hate as well, that they might see the light and have a change of heart. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the week of May 3rd, we have our, our prayers for the pres from the Presbytery are for our ministry with uh, our sister parish in El Salvador, and as well as for our mission co-worker who is working with our sister parish, Reverend Annika Street. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray as well for Covenant Presbyterian Church of West Des Moines, their pastor, Reverend Nathan Williams, and their parish associate, Reverend Marcy King. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Finally, we pray as we do every week for peace in South Sudan, for healing in our divided country, and for healing of our broken world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Friends, we come to the table. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and west, from north and south, to sit at table in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites those who trust Christ to share this feast which Christ has prepared. Please join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord our God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Eternal God, holy and mighty, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise and to worship you in every place where your glory abides. We need not hide ourselves from you before whose justice no one can stand. Your mercy was proclaimed by the apostles and the prophets and shown forth to us in Jesus Christ. You give your law to guide us and you promise new life for all, that we may live to serve you among our neighbors in all we do and say. Therefore, we lift our hearts in joyful praise, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful in every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name, for we are eagerly awaiting our Savior to come again from heaven.
We remember that when Jesus, our risen Lord, was at table with some of the disciples the night of Easter, they didn't recognize him until he broke the bread, and then their eyes were opened. Friends, take eat. Do this in remembrance of Christ. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that through word and sacrament, you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food of eternal life. So strengthen us in your service that our daily living may show our thanks. Open our eyes and hearts so that we recognize you when you come to bring us hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. Please join in our closing uh, communion hymn, which is familiar to some you may not even need to follow the words. Let us break bread together. Be with you now and always. Amen.